Hi guys, it's True here bringing you another video and this is a quick play of Exelon on the Spectrum. Now this game came out in 1987 on the Spectrum and was released on the Houston label and it was programmed all by one person, a guy called Raphael Checo I think he's called. Um, really good game this, it's by the same guy who did Cybernoid which uh, some people may remember. It's basically a run and gun game. You've got to progress from left to right. You've got two forms of weapons to defend yourself. You've got your basic gun, which is an ammo counter at the bottom there, bottom left in blue. You get 100, well, you get 99 shots because it doesn't go to 100. And you've also got a grenade, which you fire by holding down the fire button for um, for about a second. You only get 10 of those, but they are important to blow up um, obstacles in your way and blow up gun turrets later on. Well, gun turret like this one. That I'm on now. Uh, you've got nine lives to complete the entire game. No continues or anything like that. Uh, you've got your points in the middle there, and the zones tell you how many screens you've progressed through. I think the entire game's made up of about 50, 60 screens, something like that. Um, but to be honest with you, if you can get anywhere near near that, you've you've done really well because it is a very difficult game. This. Screens are made up of like several different different things. The screen that I'm currently on at the moment is constantly spawning enemies. They'll spawn at various heights and until you get to about three quarters of way of the cross the screen. They're probably the hardest screens really overall, especially when they combine with other obstacles. Um, you've got this this other obstacle here, which is a like a, a circle um, contained within all these little red red I don't know what I'd call them viruses or something. I don't know what they are. Once you blow the container up, which you have to do to progress, you have to um, destroy them to get to the other side of the screen. Other common obstacles are um, box standard gun turrets. There's also rocket tanks, which is here. You have to fire up, fire standing, and fire crouched to take out the bullets, as well as moving forward. Um, the fire fire patterns completely random, so you've got no way of uh, knowing. And once you do get there, you you get a like point, big massive bonus points for disarming it. And these pickups here, the white ones, ammunition, and the yellow one is rockets. Now this is the first screen where I've got two ways of going. I could have gone um, across the top or down below. Now when you do die, you do re-enter the same screen at the, at the same level that you entered on so um, you've no way of knowing what's what's coming on the next screen until you've memorized it that is um, and there's no way of going back as well so if you do make a poor choice um, you, you're stuck with it really um, this is another type of enemy there that um, like tower with the green thing on that was the um, the homing the homing um, Tower, what do you call it? Homing tower of that rocket that you saw, and that rocket keeps spawning until you've um, destroyed the, the destroyed the tower. Sorry, and um, the rocket is pretty deadly because it does homing on you. Um, these green things appear on quite a few screens as well. They're completely annoying, and they do have a random pattern. Now this is where you get your first power power up. It gives you an extra suit. You can take two hits, I believe now rather than just the one and you now fire at both at crouching height and standing height which makes taking these turrets out, um, these tanks out very very easy. Here's a new example of the homing rocket that will keep homing in on me until I've destroyed that uh, tower. It's very important you destroy it very quickly because uh, you can't destroy the rocket any other way. It's another example of the ever spawning enemies. These ones, these are like uh, like little fighter planes, or we could call them rockets as well, I suppose. They kind of like hover, but if they center in on you, they will sort of really zoom towards you and try and kill you. The good thing about these ever spawning enemies is that they they do stop spawning when you get so far across the screen, because they could have the game could have been very very unfair and made them spawn continuously. But at least the the program had some sense now. Another example here of a split split level here. I think I've chosen the easy easy way here because uh, taking out um, the turret thing by dodging that green thing would have been a little bit tricky. Damn. Yeah, I think it's split across two levels. I think, and there's about 30 screens per level. 
not actually sure what the plot is to be honest with you. I don't think there actually is a plot. I'm just looking at it now. Yeah, there doesn't seem to be any kind of plot whatsoever. You just a uh, futuristic soldier blowing shit up. That's all the plot we need really, isn't it? Uh, another example of the rockets. I see that one missed me because it uh, homed in, but now I've got to quickly destroy that before another one gets me. Yep, there we go. Another example of the ever spawning enemies. These ones kind of like do a little circle motion. I'm quite surprised I've got this far actually. This is the first attempt on this in uh, in years. Oh, now that would have normally killed me, but because I've got my special suit on, um, I managed to survive that hit. And there we go, another screen done. Yeah, it's important you get these ammo refills because if you if you run out of bullets, you're pretty much dead. Good, good. and the same with grenades as well because the there's impassable obstacles. So if you do run out of grenades, you're pretty much snookered. Damn! Okay, it's down to two lines now. Not good. Yeah, this was one of my favourite Spectrum games back in the day. I think it was programmed really, really well. Lots of colours on the screen, which is amazing for the Spectrum, and very little to no clash. I mean, actually, I'd say no clash whatsoever. I mean, if you have a look, when you're walking behind those pillars, you quite easily clash there, but he's cleverly, he's cleverly led the graphics. Really, really good job. The screen's going to be easy compared to the bottom, which would have been a bloody nightmare. Oh, bang on my head. And I'm going to go back and get ammunition now. This means these are going to keep spawning, but I really don't want to run out of ammunition because, like I said, you are dead pretty much if you run out. Did like the innovation of having uh, holding the fire button down to do a different kind of attack. I mean, well, it's quite simple and commonplace nowadays. When you're limited to a, a stick and one button, it's it gives you it adds a bit more variety to it. It's a bit more added layer of complexity to the gameplay. Really, really good. Oh, this is a this is a tank uh, a tank turret. You blow the top section off, which fires the bullets. Um, but the bottom section, you've got to handle like a normal normal turret by progressing forward and, and capturing it or disarming it. Uh, oh, missed him there. Try again. Yeah, that'll do. And it should be straightforward now. Conscious and running low on bullets. Oh, what's this thing do? I think this is the end of level actually. Is that the end of the level? Yeah, it's the end of the level. You get bonus for how many lives you've got left, and you also get this excellent but oh great, zero points. Oh shit. Uh, you also get massive bonuses if you decide to not get the special suit and just progress in your normal suit. So this is level two now, this is even harder. I'm, I'm quite amazed I've got 25 screens into this. Another kind of enemy there. God knows what you're going to call that. Yeah, I never managed to actually complete this back in the day. I mean, I did use a poke to give you infinite lives, and even then, it still takes quite some doing later on. Yeah, a nice relaxing screen with nothing on it. Ooh. Oh, I don't want to fall down there. There's no chance of surviving that. And there we go. Get the points for disarming that. Blow up the ball, shoot the red things, and another screen done. Yeah, I'll hopefully be doing another play a playthrough of his uh, sequel to it. Well, it's not really a sequel, it's just made by the same guy in Cyber Cybernoid. But that game is proper nails. It's probably one of the hardest games on the spectrum. I won't even say arguably because it is. <laughs> it's just absolutely mental. But you'll see when I give it give it a playthrough. 
Uh, just some quick news on other Spectrum playthroughs as well. You're watching the end of this video. Um, I'm struggling to get certain games to run. Uh, it's unfortunately most of the Ultimate Catalog. Struggling to get Jetpack, Night Law running. Um, what else? I'm struggling. Attic Attack. Can't get that running as well, which is a bit annoying. Uh, but um, I'm working on it. See if I can get something to to work. It's quite nasty. Yeah, this really tests your platforming skills as well because you have to be pixel perfect. I mean, this is like where pixel perfect came from games like this, where you had to be right on the edge of the platform. Ah, oh, and there's game over. I think I'll leave that here, guys. That was Exxon published by Houston in um, 1987 on the Spectrum. Hope you enjoyed that video and thank you very much for watching.